although you might think you know what dinosaurs look like, you don't. Most reconstructions come from, at best, scattered remains, and sometimes even a single fossil. So with only bones to work off of, we're filling in the blanks with whatever makes sense. But think about this. If future scientists dug up nothing but an elephant skull, would they ever guess it had ears like that? Or a trunk? So what are we missing now? Could sauropods have had trunks? Could T-Rex have had that wobbly chicken egg? Well, what if I told you, for a few dinosaurs, we have these answers and know exactly what they look like. And not just bones either. I'm talking everything, all the way down to their skin, muscles, and even color. So here's six dinosaurs we know the exact appearance of. First up is the animal that shattered everything we thought we knew about feathers on dinosaurs. Before this, most scientists thought feathers were only on teeny tiny bird-like dinosaurs, because the bigger the animal, the better it holds heat, so there's no reason to add more insulation. And for a while, that theory held up, with the biggest feathered dinosaur we'd found being Bepeosaurus, which, for comparison, is about 25 times smaller than what came next. Its name is Eutyrannus, a close relative of T-Rex, and a predator over 30 feet long that weighed more than a ton. Then we found not just one, but multiple nearly complete fossils covered in feathers from head to toe. But don't picture anything like bird feathers, because these weren't built for flight. They were more like a fur coat, with some feathers stretching nearly 8 inches long. Because, it turns out, where Eutyrannus lived, the temperature was closer to modern day Chicago. So, with pretty brutal winters, it essentially turned Eutyrannus into a woolly T Rex. But this wasn't the only animal that reshaped our view of dinosaurs. Meet Cetacosaurus, a small, big dinosaur from China with over 400 fossils to its name, making it one of the most well understood dinosaurs of all time. Especially because a few of those fossils? They're basically time capsules that preserve everything from skin impressions to color to its butthole. I'll explain that in a second. But first, color. Due to its unique preservation, we were able to find pigment storing cells. And while I couldn't tell the exact colors, they did figure out it had a light belly and a dark back. Classic countershading, just like a deer. And here's where things start to get weird. Cetacosaurus is one of the only dinosaurs where we know what the cloaca look like. That's the single multi-purpose hole for waste and reproduction. Reptiles and birds still have them, and thanks to this guy, now we know the rest of the dinosaurs did too. And that's not even the only surprise this fossil had for us, as it shows a row of long bristle-like structures sticking out of its tail. What they were for? We don't know. But since the Takasaurus was an early relative to Triceratops, there's a chance it also had those bristle-like tails as well. And while these fossils let us look into the past, there are people actually out here trying to protect what's still here today. My friends at Planet Wild are one of them. They're a community-based nature protection organization, and they're basically like crowdfunding for nature. Every month, the contributions of thousands of members are pooled together to fund real conservation projects, like bringing back endangered species, rewilding forests, or protecting ocean life. They document all their projects and videos that you can find right here on YouTube to show you what your contributions helped achieve. I spend so much time talking about what's gone extinct, so it's nice to actually do something that helps stuff that's still around. It's why I've become a member myself. What I love is that it's not just donate and forget. Within 30 days, they'll release a project video showing you how you help protect nature. It's like being part of a global team that's literally undoing some of the damage we've done, and you can do it all from your couch. Like in one of their projects, they're protecting one of the most trafficked animals on Earth, pangolins. These creatures have a lineage dating back some 80 million years basically making them living, walking fossils. Planet Wild helped make sure their story doesn't end here. If you want to see Planet Wild in action, you should check it out with the link in the description. There are already over 14,000 members funding new projects every single month, and honestly, it's one of the few environmental things today that feel hopeful. If you want to join a community that makes a real difference, consider joining Planet Wild at whatever amount feels right to you. Every dollar counts in protecting nature. The first 100 people to sign up using my link, J10, or scan the QR code on screen, get their first month free, paid for by me. You'll instantly be part of the new project and you'll see the results in less than a month. And if you ever feel the need to cancel, you can do that anytime, no questions asked. Alright, now enough saving the living, let's get back to the dead. What if I told you we found actual mummified dinosaurs? And I don't mean Egyptian mummies, those are still skin and bone. I mean dinosaurs that got mummified then got fossilized. So a rare preservation of a rare preservation. You see, the way fossils work is over time, the hardest parts of the body get slowly replaced by minerals. So basically, all that's left is a rock cast of the original bone. 
So soft stuff like muscles, skin, and internal organs, these things usually disappear long before fossilization can even begin. But in a few ultra rare cases, a dinosaur corpse becomes mummified, allowing all those soft bits to survive long enough for fossilization. Take Dakota for example. It's mostly known from a single fossilized foot, but it essentially looks exactly the same way as the day it died. You can see the wrinkles, the folds, and even the skin droop right between the toes. But that's not even the best example we've ever found. This is Leonardo, a duck-billed dinosaur who got buried fast enough to preserve almost its entire body. It's one of the only times we've ever seen a dinosaur as it actually looked in life. His skin still wrapped around the bones, his muscles and tendons are visible, we can even see some internal organs. In his sided stomach specifically, were traces of its final meal, ferns, conifers, magnolia leaves, about what you'd expect. But it also had around 200 fossilized parasites that were living in there too. Now, the coolest part in my opinion, because the skin was so well preserved, we can actually see scale patterns across the body. Different parts had different sized scales, which might hint at color patterns, opening up the idea to dinosaurs being striped like zebras or spotted like leopards. But sadly, we didn't recover any pigments so we can't tell their exact color. Though luckily, we've got a few dinosaurs where we actually do know their color. The first ever was Anchiornis. When scientists looked at its fossilized feathers under a microscope, they found those tiny pigment structures again. And by comparing the shape of those pigments to what's found in modern birds, they were able to see Anchiornis in color. On the body, we found gray, black and white on the wings, and interestingly, a bright rusty red mohawk, which shows us that dinosaurs were almost certainly as intricately colored as birds today, and likely would have used this color to attract mates or scare off rivals. But things get even more complex when we look at Microraptor, which lived about 40 million years later. It had feathers on all four limbs, letting it glide from tree to tree like a prehistoric mix between a crow and a flying squirrel. And just like Anchiornis, its feathers were black. At least, that's how they looked at first. See, Microraptor lived in a dense forest, where thick trees blocked out most of the light. But every now and then, a beam of sunlight would break through the canopy. And if Microraptor happened to be sitting in the right spot, that plain black would suddenly shimmer with blue and green, turning a Microraptor into a mating display disco ball. Okay, now before we talk about the most lifelike fossil ever found, there's something else you need to hear first. A notosaur called Pinacosaurus was discovered with a fossilized larynx, which is basically its voice box. And when researchers finally analyzed it, they found signs that armored dinosaurs didn't just grunt or growl like we once thought they might have actually sounded closer to birds. Which makes the fossil of Borea pelta even more fascinating, because it's the clearest picture of any dinosaur we've ever discovered. It stretched nearly 20 feet long and weighed over 3,000 pounds, so the idea that something this massive might have been chirping like a bird is just insane to me. This was also the first non-feathered dinosaur we've ever found with its skin color preserved. Its body shows a reddish brown back and a pale underside, the same counter shading we saw on Cetacosaurus. And if something of this size still needed camouflage, you can only imagine the predators living in its environment. Which is probably why its entire body was covered in thick armor and spikes, basically turning it into a walking fortress. But the way it died makes things even stranger. Its stomach still held bits of charred plants, evidence it may have died shortly after foraging in a recently burned forest. But the real mystery is that it was found over 100 miles offshore, buried in what used to be a shallow sea with the only fossils around it being mosasaurs. How it got there is still a mystery. The best guess that we have is that when animals die, their bodies fill with gas. So scientists think Borea pelta bloated, floated, and drifted across the ocean until it finally sank, landing on its back and settling into the seafloor mud, leaving behind the face and body of a dinosaur frozen in time. Which one of these did you guys think was the coolest? We've lost a lot of amazing species over time, so let's do everything we can to stop us from losing any more. Go check out Planet Wild with the links in the description, and you can see their project protecting penguins right here.